Shane, Shane, Shane. Oh, I'm sorry. Not into this retro shit, all right? I just wanted to bring you back. Bring us back to the, to the 16th century. To the 16th century. <laughs> um, well, why I've got you here, primarily because it's your house. <laughs> Welcome. It's a good start. Um, we've just finished making a record called uh, An Actor of Repairs. Um, we've been making records for about 12 or 13 years. I know. Fighting for just as long. Um, I am actually very interested to know, was there any major difference in this recording experience than the previous four or five records that we've made together? Uh, I think they're always different. But this was particularly easy, not that any of them have been hard. And I think the writing, the writing is more, uh, is a little bit more edited perhaps than usual. I think the songs, again, are broader, but, um, you know, excuse me, but, you know, incredible songs. Youth, recording that has been... been a oh, we're still talking about the record we just finished. <laughs> I thought you were Sorry. talking. I know you hate it. I thought you were talking about synchronicity by the police. <laughs> the editing thing was interesting because, as we talked about, each song was written three or four times. None of them, the way they're on the record now, were as they started Have you done a year that and a half ago. Never. No. It's quite yeah. obvious. Have you ever listened to anything we've done before? I love your demos. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but no, that that most of them started off as. Uh, meaning to be orchestrated with a large orchestral accompaniment and then when it uh, became obvious that that wasn't possible, um, necessity being the mother of invention, I realised that it wouldn't be appropriate anyway mm. and so we, we recorded them with smaller ensembles. And then it's incredible the way a uh, tune, a song develops in the process that how we approached it, having say Wolfie coming in and drum Having, and I think in another thing, there was different personnel than hmm. the last time we recorded. Yeah. Um, well, I think a lot of the reducing the accompaniment was because of the people that we could uh, potentially get in. Zanny, you know. Zanny Collatch on violin, Cleo Rennan, piano, Brett Wolfen on drums, Davey Lane playing a lot of bass and some guitar. And initially, we weren't going to be employing your, what's that large lute that you play? The guitar. <laughs> and the, but then the songs, again, that's like, there's, it needed it and, it, and it's, it's calling out for it. So again, it was the song, not chasing after how the song should sound at the start. You know, this is the way that the song should sound. Let's get in the studio and make it sound like that. No, absolutely. And you're, you're fantastic like that because you aren't beholden to the vision if you had any. I don't think I even understand what beholden, <laughs> the vision. I don't believe I said it. Is that a Sting record? No. No, it's, um, no. I do mean that actually because mm. you're, you, your approach is here it is, let's bet around, see what happens. Yeah, and, and previously that has been fun to a degree, but I, I don't think we've had an experience where it's worked so well as no, this. No, it has been uh, incredibly, uh, what's the word? Um, I want to say stimulating, but I don't mean that. <laughs> because you don't think I'm mature I, I, enough to handle a word that's thin no. a word like stimulating. Um, I am. Oh my God, engorged. I don't have a bad vocabulary and I can't yeah. find the word. Tell me what it is, It's Tim. because you're stuck in the 16th century it and is. everyone knows that we, we're not as evolved. I uh, don't even know what that means. Um, <laughs> how important do you think is it choosing not only the right players but the right people to have in the studio? Two-part question. Because um, I think we lucked out. We seem to have this... Uh, coterie of incredible players who also tend to be friends. Um, yeah, no, don't you think that is too, just the, all the people that we have worked with and we have, we are spoiled for these choices. Hmm. And I think in the process of us developing as musicians or writers or players or whatever, each project we come to, because 
it's evolved. You bring another level of uh, writing skills or playing skills or influences. Hmm. So, you know, not necessarily that, that means albums become better and better and better, but they're more informed. And I think on this, because of its breadth, uh, it speaks to that because it, the, it's almost schizophrenic in its, you know, song choices, its, its uh, uh, styles, but yet it's cohesive. We're I still talking about the record. No, I strayed uh, from the question. No, no, well, um, I strayed from the answer and I was the one asking it. Uh, ben Franz, Pedal Steel, which I didn't envisage on the record no. at all. And then he said in his um, benevolent dictator kind of way. He's a terrible man. Well, something wrong with him. Tolerate him. Mm. Uh, and he said, well, look, I've got the pedal steel in the car and um, it's a, a really prominent instrument on the record. Um, he's playing some incredible double bass as well uh, by Ben. And I think uh, with Benny, when he's playing uh, pedal steel, as all the other people on the album, they, they take direction so well and they're really willing to do something. They have no sort of comfort zone which is, sense. considering their dexterity and the musicianship and their intelligence, is, I, I find it surprising because I'm, and this is no self-effacing thing, I know I'm the least musically proficient person in the room at all times, no, Shane. You keep saying this, but, you know, it's untrue. You may not be skilled, you may not have been, have a history, a little squiddish history, like I might have, maybe, but... Your progressions on your instinctual writing is second to none. Well, I think there that any instance I have told you many times, text you when I'm working on a piece of yours, mm. and said, for fuck's sake, this eight bars is incredible. And, and you were is. talking, oh, I, I thought you was a euphemism. Um, <laughs> but I think that those choices and that having that, that um, freedom to wander and, and go off and stick to is informed by actually the people who play on it. Melanie Robinson, who did a bunch of arrangements, played cello, did some, a lot of singing on the record as well. Um, working with her for over 10 years, I feel that without knowing um, uh, intellectually what is going on, I feel, I, I'm sure there are progressions and there are chord shapes and movements that are informed by my relationship with her and by yourself, I hear you playing this, what was that, 90s <laughs> throwback, messy, but intricate. the 1590s. Sounds like a typewriter. A typewriter played by a <laughs> fairy. I don't, I don't know. I oh, quite, please. No, no, I just mean very... Yeah, indeed. Delicate. Um, but look, anyway, it's cocktail hour <laughs> and, <laughs> because it's past midday. Um, and uh, this therapy session is now <laughs> over. If you could just uh, take your... Inspiration was the word. Can you believe? I couldn't think of the word. It was inspiring doing this album. Oh, doing this record? Absolutely. Oh, well, I'm, I'm really glad. Which makes it all the harder to tell you. Ah, oh, it's okay. I know. And it's that cut. The cut point is, which makes it all the harder to tell you. <laughs> I want it to be cut there. <laughs>